a number of different um, healing arts that I'm bringing together, uh, yoga and yoga therapy, um, coming from India, and then the uh, Chinese practices. Um, so I've been studying with some senior Chinese teachers from what's called the Lu Wudang Longmen lineage, which is the Dragon's Gate lineage. Um, and that's 19 generations long, so it's probably about one and a half thousand years of teacher passing to student. And so I feel really fortunate to be on the end of that. Um, so I'm uh, going to talk about some different aspects, uh, slightly different theme um, than some of the other talks, but related, uh, specifically movement related to health. And what we're doing as we work with these practices is we're working with ancient uh, tools and we're trying to apply them to our modern world. Um, one of the ways that we can really think about that is uh, looking at these different frames of reference. Um, so there's a physical, I mean, and these are arbitrary splits, but we've got a physical layer, a mental layer, an emotional layer. Uh, energetic layer, spiritual layers, and each of these arts addresses these phenomena in different ways. And so really what we're studying is we're studying the interaction between these different landscapes. And uh, so my journey over the last 20 years or so has been to find how these different fields interrelate whilst attempting to keep them separate. Um, and so the, the work is both internal and external. When we start to talk about physical stuff, we can, we've got practices that we can see, but then we're working with mental layers, with thought forms, with emotions, and all these layers are woven together. So that's really been the basis of my studies so far. Um, when, we're looking at, uh, when we're looking at health, what are, what are we talking about? Um, these old medical systems, uh, we might call them original medicine, even though they're talked about as being alternative in relation to our modern era. Uh, they've, they're full of diverse practices. They include um, Ayurvedic systems, include uh, herb, herbology, uh, movement, massage. Chinese medicine includes movement, um, acupuncture, herbs. Uh, there are also many spiritual components to these as well. Um, and so our work as practitioners of these is to begin to discern what parts of these systems relate to the present. And, and each of us in this field are kind of exploring those in different ways. And I've focused primarily on movement and breathing and more physical, mental, emotional side rather than looking at the, the, the more herbal aspect. And we're addressing some of the modern malaise, which includes stress and some of the healing from injuries and surgeries that we're facing. And it's a very different way of looking at medicine because instead of going against disease processes, uh, we're actually taking a non-allopathic approach and we're looking at uh, practices that generate wellness. And this is a fundamental change. So we're moving to an idea of daily uh, health care as opposed to health care when you're sick. So uh, this is a, a very different way of thinking about uh, health and well-being. And part of that is this daily movement, uh, which we have an understanding of in the West in terms of you know, daily exercise, walking, and so on. But uh, the, the healing arts uh, from Asia have... Uh, systematized ways of moving that help to really support health and well-being and make it flourish. So what I've done in, uh, in my book is really look at some of the principles of these movement arts uh, and the cranial sacral therapy, which is a di uh, division of osteopathy, really, and is, uh, was moved out into the massage therapy world. Um, and I've tried to find the principles that are uh, common between some of these systems that I've actually been able to work with within myself and with my clients. And then that creates a framework for understanding the, the movement arts. 
So I'm going to basically talk to you about some of the, the more uh, central principles. Um, I've created maybe 20 different principles in this book. But uh, I'm going to talk about some of the different principles that I'm using to work with individuals and that are also key to my own sort of personal practice. Um, so we're going to look at some of these in different ways. Some of them I'll give you little things to do so you can explore them yourself. Uh, the spine is the center of our living being and uh, it's falling into disrepair in most people and what you're sitting on is one of the main causes for that. So if you can just come forward in your chair slightly so you're no longer using the back of the chair and just notice your spine. So this is actually tuning into the main structural support of the body. Um, one of my teachers says that sitting is the new smoking. Uh, the spine is obviously the structural component to our, our bodies, but it also houses the nervous system. Um, and so this is housing the system that feels. So all of our movement relates to our spine through feeling. Um, and it also relates to, the nervous system relates to spatial awareness as well. So where we are in space, uh, what surface we're making contact with. Um, and we're basically, through what these practices, we're redeveloping the nervous system and remodeling the nervous system through each practice. So on a daily uh, or weekly practice, we're kind of re-engineering our nervous system. Uh, the old way of looking at the, at the joints of the body was seeing them as separate. Uh, this was the old biomechanical model that I believe was taught in medical schools for a long time. And one of the things that's becoming very really obvious in, in my own practice and in that of my teachers is that really the joints operate as a network so that all of the joints of the body are in communication with their neighbors. Um, the move, people that are involved in movement will probably have a sense of that. So if there's an injury or a strain pattern in one particular joint, you look to the neighboring joints and you look to the, the structures adjacent to that to try and understand what's happening. So this gives us a very different sense of our skeleton. Um, and one of the things that's really important is that as well as bringing these five frames of reference together that I mentioned earlier, the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic layers of ourselves, is really seeing the body as whole. So we're looking at holism in every regard. And so this way of seeing our skeleton as whole is a key, kind of a key part of that. And then seeing the, the, the different uh, systems of the body as really being part of a super system. But I think this is an interesting, just an interesting idea of uh, bringing the joints into relationship. So a lot of the time when I'm teaching, I'm sharing uh, about uh, helping people to perceive their joints and the relationships between them. Uh, I've also mentioned the midline here, and the midline is not a structure. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a organizing principle. Uh, in a MIT study in the 90s, the, they sort of discovered that the same forces that develop the embryo go on and become the healing forces in the adult. So the same structure, the same forces that organize life, creating the, the primal streak, and then the notochord, and then the spine, go on continuously and become the healing forces in the adult. So that's part of this embryological aspect. We can't really talk about movement without breath. Just wouldn't really make sense. Um, our breathing is unique from moment to moment. So just take a nice deep breath now. Notice your breathing. Uh, it's part of the relaxation in, the, in, in each of these systems I'm working with. They talk about the breath in different ways. They have different techniques and methodologies to work with the breath. Um, it's rhythmical, obviously. That links to any kind of rhythmical movement. Kashi was mentioning rhythm in his, his dance work earlier. Um, and mo movement is at the foundation of health. We've, we've heard that from several, several people tonight. And movement also helps to along with breath, helps to activate the vagus nerve, which is mediating relaxation within our system. So this is really helping us to deal with some of the stress-based problems that we're facing. Um, and when, when the body starts to calm down, then all the biochemistry changes. And uh, so I'm working with people with breath a lot. 
Um, we're also working with gravity and the ground. That's one of the principles I work with a lot. The, uh, the gravity that we're constantly um, being affected by, it's happening all the time, and these gravitational and anti-gravity structures in the body are working all the time. And you, this is a picture here of me doing a headstand, being assisted by one of my teachers. Um, and this begins to, this relationship to gravity begins to give us an understanding of this letting go of tension. We'll talk a little bit more about tension in a moment. Um, all animals relate instinctively to gravity, but as we've kind of lost our movement potential, we've kind of slipped into something a little bit different which is not so gravitationally aware. Um, the fluid body is another principle I've been working with. Uh, the fluids in the body appear to be the, the vehicle for the healing forces. This is both true uh, in Chinese medicine as well as in uh, cranial sacral therapy. And there's constantly interchange of fluids. And so as we begin to uh, practice these arts, the fluids of the body begin to interchange differently, which has a profound effect on health and healing at every level. Um, we've got uh, tension and connectivity um, as another principle that I work with. This is a tensegrity model you can see on the projector. I brought in a tensegrity model here. And this is a structure that's held apart by the tension in the structures. And there's been some uh, studies in recent uh, years, in the last 20 years or so, within the connective tissue community um, to understand biotensegrity and how our bodies actually work as a tensegrity structure. Um, and this is to do with the, the, the hydration of the body and the, basically the capability of the body to become elastic and retain its elastic qualities late into life. Um, and then we get to the energetics of the body, which is a vast subject that's not even really been touched scientifically yet as we begin to understand how the physics of energy and our own personal experience of energy is uh, related. Um, some of the key things to just think about, this midline that we talked about earlier is an energetic phenomena. Um, and in cranial sacral therapy, the energies of the body organize so they're organizing like through this midline phenomena, protect energies of the body, protect areas when there's some kind of trauma. Um, the body organizes itself in relation to that trauma. Um, and then we've got um, healing. So the energies of the body are very much related to healing processes, whether it's healing your ankle, uh, attention and uh, um, processes are organized in relation to any injury or uh, impact in order to support healing. So there's lots of different aspects to the energetic um, aspect of ourselves, which I'm not going to, that'd be, that'd be a whole day's are in itself. Um, I did want to uh, do a little bit of a demonstration for you because we, we talked a little bit about movement a lot, but we haven't really seen any movement. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a demonstration before we uh, move on. Bagua. Uh, Bagua is one of the Chinese arts. I'm um, just going to do a very, very quick demonstration to show some of the complexities of the movement.
So that's just a little bit of movement there in a presentation about movement where everybody talked and didn't move. But uh, that was a demonstration of what's called Bagua. It's a sister art to Tai Chi. Um, very powerful practice. That was just a snippet. Um, so just in conclusion, um, what I'm filing, finding is that each of these arts, each of these movements arts, has similar healing objectives. And um, the principles that I'm drawing create vibrant health. Each individual approach, whether it's yoga or cranial sacral therapy or Tai Chi or Kung Fu, they all have slightly different approaches, methodologies, um, but they all affect these five frames of reference, which begins to change and transform people at a foundational level. So uh, I, I envision that there'll be more partnering of practitioners of these arts with conventional medical professionals as we go forwards. Uh, in China, during the Cultural Revolution, uh, basically they assigned everybody to a Tai Chi teacher, realizing that their medical system was not able to cope with the, with the change. Um, so that was really the first big experiment of assigning people for healthcare reasons to these arts. And I envision that in the future we're going to see more and more of this. Uh, yoga is now a, an enormous industry, dare we say that, in America, as many, many people are turning to it as a way to manage the stress and uh, the different facets of their lives. So I envision a lot more constructive dialogue, things like this, where we get an opportunity to share perspectives. And uh, thank you very much for having me talk.